Young men caught in a police sex date. Task force members pose as children online to identify sexual predators. You know she's 13, and you know that's wrong, and you know that's wrong. My son went to prison. New Dr. Phil. Hey, so um, I'm going to do like an analysis of a new Dr. Phil episode. Um, it's about sexual abuse uh, of uh, minors. Um, you know, they communicated with someone online who they believe to be underage and they still met them. So um, I believe I can discuss this issue and uh, like bring a different perspective to it. Um, I myself was abused um, from, I was in seventh and eighth grade. So for about two years, um, whatever age you're in middle school, I don't recall, but I think I was like 12 or 13. And yeah, so this went on for two years. Um, the, um, individual in question, he, uh, uh, lived across the street from my middle school, um, which was just like a coincidence. But it's kind of scary when you think about the fact that uh, sexual predators can live um, right across the street from a middle school and uh, there's no legal repercussions. I did attempt at one point to go um, the legal route, um, you know, to punish this person. But <laughs> uh, the attorney told me that they looked into this person's assets and they had like no money worth taking. Um, and this was like years after the fact. Um, so they actually didn't pursue my case. So, um, you know, no justice was done. Um, they said he had, uh, um, you know, like less than $5,000 in his bank account and like a crappy car, um, you know, and I wasn't like trying to take all his money um, it's just that is one of the few ways a person can get justice if they've been um, sexually abused. So um, I've just like let it go. Um, you know, I've dealt with it. I don't think it affects me too much nowadays, but it did affect me for a long time after. So yeah, um, because I've personally been sexually um, abused um, when I was underage, uh, I think I can, you know, provide some commentary. And other than that, um, here's the Dr. Phil episode. Okay. Let's see. I started one night when I was on Craigslist. Sebastian had not had a lot of experience with girls or with... This is how a lot of these stories begin on Craigslist. But sex. I was going a little bit desperate. I was on the casual encounters page on Craigslist. There was three different ads with the same phone number. I sent them a text message. I saw your Craigslist ad. Are you busy today? They respond, oh, I'm worried I'm too young for you. I respond, age doesn't bother me unless you're like 60, I guess. Ooh. I'm almost 14, <laughs> but look, um... That's so funny, that emoji he used. Um, like, shrug face. Um, also, it's funny how, you know, age doesn't matter unless it's going in the opposite direction, like older. So... It doesn't bother me unless you're like 60, I guess. I'm almost 14, but look a lot older. I don't think Craigslist is where you want to find your dates at your age. But again, I don't mind oh. if you don't mind. <laughs> He's busting out the life advice. Like, you know, at 14, you really shouldn't be um, trying to hook up on Craigslist. Maybe you should use some other service. I felt like they were looking for sex. I told her things like we would meet up, go to a hotel, and then we'd do it there, have a shower together, and then we'd do it there again. However, my intention wasn't to have sex with this. A lot of these guys have like a thing about the girl showering beforehand. Um, as if she's like not clean enough to just do a quickie or something. I don't get it. Minor, my intention was to have a conversation and persuade them to get off of Craigslist. So he showed up at a business place where he was told to meet the girl. And when I arrived, I texted the person saying that I was there at the meetup point. At that point, I <laughs> was here. ambushed by the police. 
They rammed their car on the backside of my car. He was surrounded by police officers who were pointing their guns at him, shouting out, get out of the car and get on the ground. And then they... What was that face the mother did? Their guns at him, shouting out, get out of the car and get on the ground. She, she had like a confused look on her face. Um, as if like there's some other way to deal with a predator um, that's been caught in this thing. Like, uh, I'm not sure how a police officer is supposed to approach that situation. Like, oh, sir, um, you're the guy uh, we've been trying to entrap. Would you mind just getting into the police car? Um, uh, so sorry for the ambush. Like, no, you, you tell the criminal, you know, get on the ground and then they arrest him. Like, that's pretty standard. They don't have to be nice about it. They don't have to um, try to, like, sweet talk him into the police vehicle. It's You've been caught. <laughs> get into the car so we can take you um, to the station to be processed. And then they put their knee on my back to make sure that I was in their custody. Oh, my God. After that, they tie my hands with a zip tie and they put me in the back of their car. I had thoughts of, oh, my God, I'm in real trouble. Well, what I'm most worried about is his health. He wasn't thinking that he would be in trouble um, when he started talking to this girl. It's only after they zip tied him that he was like, oh, yeah, maybe that was a mistake. Like, he right, seems kind of slow. She's desperate to clear Sebastian's name and prove he was entrapped by the police. First, See, they're not even claiming that he's not guilty that like he didn't participate in this they're claiming that this was entrapment which is you know <laughs> i mean that means he's guilty right he's not um denying that he met up with the girl and neither is the mom so what is the issue here i'm not sure so they interviewed me and they asked me questions of what was going on through my head i can't really remember it felt like it felt like she was egging me on and then I just started. When you initiated that you wanted sex with her, did you know she was 13 at the time? Yes. So I wanted to tell her that. Okay. Case closed, right? <laughs> I would have, if I was the police officer, I would have stopped talking to him right then and there. I would have been like, okay, you know, we have our confession. We need to get off Christmas and avoid this life. This life. Avoid this path before something bad happens. What path? Meeting up with pedophiles? That they were trying to... A lot of the pedophiles, they have this excuse that, oh, I was going to meet her to tell her that what she's doing is wrong or potentially dangerous or whatever. And it's such a silly excuse because if that was the case, you could tell... Um, that you could give that advice through the text, right? through the phone call or whatever. You don't need to meet in person to give someone this like sage advice. Um, there's no need to meet them. You could just text it, hey, um, you really should not be doing this and you know that. Um, this is potentially dangerous. Uh, you're, and you're too young. Get me to confess to things that I've done that I have not done before. Now you went out there for what purpose, for real? Don't, don't minimize your beliefs. Originally, it was about sex. Okay. They were asking me. Like, second confession. <laughs> so, he did go there for sex. So, even if he wanted to inform the young girl that what she's doing is dangerous, then it doesn't really matter because that's like a second confession. So, he admitted he knew her age. Usually, they will deny that um, they, meaning... Um, uh, pedophiles or predators usually they will deny that they knew the person's age uh and then if you know that doesn't work then they'll be um they'll revert to plan b which is uh telling the police officer i was going there to inform her um that what she's doing is dangerous and uh both their lies questions about how i view minors are you saying you never before? No. Oh, okay, so like in this scene, the thing he has across his chest and his fingers and the wrist cuff, um, he's taking a polygraph in this moment. So that's interesting that they recorded that. Um, yeah, 
I don't think you see too many uh, when they're interrogating um, alleged suspects. Uh, so I've had I've had a polygraph before, and it's a little nerve wracking. And hopefully everyone out there knows that it's not one hundred percent accurate. Uh, it may not even be eighty percent accurate. And there are many people that can pass a polygraph, even if they're lying. Um, the type of personality trait that uh, can beat um, a polygraph test is uh, like slight sociopathy, maybe someone that um, doesn't really have an easy time empathizing with other people. Uh, because for those people lying, it's like no big deal. Um, it doesn't really have consequences and they don't feel that it hurts anyone. So to lie on a polygraph test, um, their body won't have the same physical response to someone that, you know, views honesty, like, um, as a high virtue or a, a value of theirs. So if you're not typically an honest person, you could probably pass a polygraph test. But this guy's gonna fail. It, yeah, um, I can t tell this guy uh, is gonna crack. <laughs> Thoughts of what I'd like to do to minors. Did you have any type of sexual contact with the minor? No. They were very relentless with their questions. Relentless? No. Like, they just asked the questions that they would ask anyone in this situation. Sure. Yes. They wanted something that would give them the credibility of me being a child molester, even though I am not a child molester. Have well, you ever downloaded not yet. child porn? No. They told me numerous times that I failed the lie detector test, but they never provided results for the lie detector test. They don't have to. They don't have to. Um, the polygraph is, if it's not administered by a police department, um, what they will do usually is send you to an outside company or like a private um, investigator that does perform the polygraph test. So, um, you know, it's up to you to get in contact with the person that administered the polygraph test to get your results. And usually the, um, what the results would be, would be like a printout of your heart rate, blood pressure, and skin conductivity. Um, skin conductivity are those straps he had on his fingers let's see so if you look here you'll see he has these um little velcro straps on his finger and what that measures is basically uh like your sweat so if you get asked a question that's difficult they can expect your um the amount of like salt is really what it's measuring in your sweat to increase temporarily. So um, the test doesn't spit out like a piece of paper that says yes, lying, um, or no, honest. It prints out, um, you know, uh, body measures uh, the same way uh, if you've been to a hospital, they take an EKG of your heart rate and then like a paper prints out and, uh, you know, it's just like waves. So even if he did receive those results, he still wouldn't be able to interpret it, most likely. They wanted something that would give them the credibility of me being a child molester, even though I am not a child molester. Have you ever downloaded any child porn? No. They told me numerous times that I failed an eye detector test, but they never provided results for the line detector test. You didn't pass the test. Does that mean, because they didn't give you results, does that mean you didn't fail the test? No, of course not. If you take a test in school and you get a hundred on it, um, but the teacher doesn't give you the test back, like you still got a hundred and vice versa. You know, if you fail the test, but the teacher doesn't give it to you, um, you still failed. <laughs> I'm not saying you rape somebody, you understand that, right? Right. Okay. I'm not saying that you make your pedophile. I'm just saying that you didn't tell me something that you held out. I mean, you can think of what it could be. 
What could it possibly be? Because I'm trying to be truthful here. It was very disturbing to watch. The officer who was conducting the polygraph was very upset when Sebastian was not saying the things he wanted to hear. Sebastian did not understand why the police didn't believe him. He thought maybe they had him confused with somebody else. My mother bailed me out with $50,000. There's no confusion, right? They were asking about other events that, like, um, as he said, would uh, lend credibility to um, the police's allegation that this guy is a sex criminal. So it doesn't matter if this is the first time he did it because he did it in this situation. And, you know, that's the thing that he's in trouble for. He's not in, in trouble for possible past crimes the charge was an online solicitation of a minor the plea deal was five years prison and i said no so we ended up going to trial but in the end they gave me the really? guilty verdict the sentence was really? surprise 10 years probation i don't know why he went to trial oh, i guess he's just stupid and for 10 years i had to register as a sex offender a couple of weeks after Sebastian was arrested, then it was put out in the media that it was a big sexting operation. A multi-agency sting helps bring down more than 60 people. The people of the state of Texas, we've heard you. We've stepped up efforts to combat human trafficking. Stop preying on our children because we're tired of it. And it's a matter of time before you come knocking on our door or we come knocking on yours. I'm not a sex offender. I'm not a child predator. And I'm not a pedophile. You're here because you want to clear your son's name, and you want your name cleared. Yes, sir. That's right. Okay, so Sebastian, let's be let's be clear here. Um, That's his right. You know, if he feels that this um, somehow like unjustly affected his life, then you know he should be able to defend himself. But I I don't understand the argument that. Well, the police caught me. The police, you know, were doing some kind of program trying to catch predators. And I got caught. And the issue is that they um, managed to uh, create this program aimed at catching predators. Like, uh, a, a couple of other people in his situation have um, tried using that same defense. Like, in court. It, you know, entrapment. But... Um, and that word is so vague because, <laughs> uh, they do, you know, you can call them programs. I, I think they said this was called Operation Gauntlet or something. Uh, I think that's the police's right, you know, to catch criminals. Um, and if they want to get like really technical with it, if they think that it will make it easier to catch people like this. Um, by implementing a program like that, then I personally don't see the issue with it. Because the way I'm looking at it is I would never be caught doing something like that. So it's not really a concern to me, like whether or not there are um, these stings going on. It, how would you be caught up with something like that unless you were somehow involved? So You're not highly experienced in the dating world, right? None whatsoever, or very little. Very I'd little. Say. Okay, and <laughs> so you. He he is like pretty awkward. Went to a Craigslist. There's a section on there for casual conversations or casual relationships or whatever, and it's eighteen and over. So you didn't go into a children's chat room or something like that, trying to find an underage girl that you could prey upon. That's your point. Correct? I've never done anything like that. Wow. Ever before. Wow. I mean, you got to give credit where credit is due. It's not like he went into a children's chat room. I don't even know why Dr. Phil would say that. I think he's just trying to, like, play devil's advocate. Um, because, well, I don't think it's even alleged at this point because the guy was on um, the SO list for 10 years, they said. You don't have any criminal record or you don't have any history of doing anything like that. They've never run you off from the schoolyard, hanging around, looking at little girls or anything of the sort. You have no history of anything like that. I don't drink. 
I don't do drugs. I don't smoke. Um, I don't hit on minors. I don't do any of that. You well, anybody, you did. Or... What is he talking about? Okay, that's great that he doesn't drink or do drugs. Like, those are all good things. But that doesn't have anything to do with um, whether or not you're a predator. And to my knowledge, on TCAP, uh, you know, to catch a predator, the guys that came, um, there, there weren't any that had like drug issues, except maybe one. Um, I, I remember one episode of TCAP, uh, one of them, I believe, brought cocaine. So, but it, even in that situation, you, can, you can't say that the drug abuse is somehow related to um, what he did. This was like another issue he had to deal with. And it doesn't have anything to do with uh, your sexual orientation or uh, whether um, you would try to prey on children. Because there's many people with drug addictions and, you know, they wouldn't go this far. All right. So you started talking to someone and right up front, they said, I'm 13. They said oh, almost 14. Okay. He understood 14, but... Right. They, okay, they well, let's look at the text messages. Sebastian, what did you want to do tonight? That's so weird how the mom is, like, trying to defend him. And I, and I understand why on, you know, like a biological family level. Like, she's looking out for her son. So that's really sweet. But at the same time... You know, she should be encouraging him to take responsibility. And I don't think she's doing that. So that's a tough position. If you, you know, if you were a parent of someone that was involved in something like this, then, you know, you have love for the child and you want to defend them. But when the evidence is like irrefutable and you can't really argue against it, then, you know, you're stuck between a rock and a hard place, as they say. Then she says, well, I am 13, so I don't want no kids, laugh out loud. And you say, I've only actually done it once. So I'd love to get more experience. That's not funny. I don't, I don't know why I laughed. Two. The girl says, would you wear protection? I don't want to get prego. You say, of course. I know how you said you don't want to have kids. Okay, mom, there was no predisposition. He didn't go there looking for an underage girl, but he found one in his mind. Mm -hmm. Do you know the difference between right and wrong? I want to believe that I do. Okay. What? Wrong so answer. He knows the difference. Between wrong answer. Um, especially for the argument that he's making that he's the victim of a police sting. Like, I'm just, this guy is, uh, you know, bottom of the barrel IQ. And he seems like he could be on the spectrum slightly. Between right and wrong. He even says, you shouldn't be on this site. Mm -hmm. But since you are, and you're showing me acceptance, which I don't often get. Let's hook up. Now, how do you make that okay? Well, because he was, before any of that uh, part of the conversation happened, he was talking about other things. He was not talking about sex. They kept directing him towards sex. So no, I have the whole conversation. He knows the difference between right and wrong. He knows she's 13. And he doesn't disengage at that point. Now that's wrong, and you know that argument doesn't really make sense, and it doesn't wash out the bad. So even if they were talking about My Little Pony, or I'm, um, I'm not sure what thirteen-year-olds are into nowadays, but if they're talking about I don't know something that's popular with thirteen-year-olds, um, they will. Um, the police officers would say, you know, that that's grooming. Like, you're trying to uh, lead her in like, oh, I'm 22, but I'm like a young 22. <laughs> uh, 
it, this argument doesn't make sense when you try to break it down. It, um, just because they have similar interests, e even if he was like into video games or something, um, and she was really into video games, it doesn't matter. That's wrong, and you know that's wrong. Now that part of this. Oh, he just rolled his eyes. Did you see that? <laughs> he just rolled his eyes. Wrong, and you know that's wrong, and you know that's wrong. Now he went like. <laughs> that part of this is is wrong. You agree with that, correct? I agree with that. I believe, you know, if you go on a show like this or something to repent, um, or to clear your name, then you can't roll your eyes. Like you have to accept that, you know, what you did was wrong, and yeah, you just have to accept it. Like rolling your eyes is basically him saying like, "Oh my God, I don't know why you guys are making such a big deal out of this." Bad, but his intention was to talk to her. Well, let's look further because here's the text where you're planning with the underage girl. You say, "Let's get a hotel tonight," and okay. I'm going to get ready so I can pick you up. Send me the address. You want sex, right? Girl, do you? Sebastian, yes, I do. Oh. But I'm also offering dinner and a movie before we hop right into it. Oh my God. I'm just being polite. <laughs> I can't believe he said that. Out of public. Just it's like he's trying to seem like a supreme gentleman. But he's not. Uh, I'm offering dinner and a movie before we hop right into it. So, wow, you know, um, yeah, he's a gentleman. Like, he's going to take you out first. And then he says, I'm just being polite. So if that wasn't, um, like, the socially uh, appropriate thing to do, you know, if you're trying to get laid to take someone out for dinner or something first, then he wouldn't do it. He would just be like, okay, well, let's go back to my hotel room. Being polite. So he was trying to meet her at a public place. He was giving her the attention she wanted. Well, coming up, Sebastian told police... What? I swear, some of the stuff the mother says is worse than, like, what he's saying. Like I said, he seems slow. Um, maybe some mental issues going on. And that does, doesn't excuse what he did or what he said, but it's, you know, one way to, like, understand what's happening here. But the mom's like, oh, she wanted the attention. What? Being labeled with a child predator has definitely ruined my life. The police in my community created a criminal can do where there are no criminals. I've had my friends turn their backs on me. My goal is to get my name cleared so people will not doubt me. People with ADHD oh, save 10 hours studying with this Chrome extension. But no, by all means. Sebastian says he's ready to put his arrest in an online sexting behind him. His mom, Araceli, says her son was taken advantage of because he's naive and law enforcement is finding the weak and preying on them. Sebastian said the police intimidated him during the interrogation. Mm. Let's take a look. Naive is not the right word. Because you can be naive, but still follow the law. So that's not an excuse. And it doesn't even make sense Like when you actually break it down. Um, being naive does not predispose you to crime. Like... You can't say, um, oh, uh, I killed this guy. Uh, I was naive that shooting him three times would not kill him, right? Um, it doesn't, when you follow that argument through, it doesn't make sense. I just had an urge, and I thought this girl was my one and only chance because I've been on corrections for a while. I thought maybe I could be somebody that could help her steer in the right direction once I got my thoughts under control because I realized what I was doing was wrong. Since I've already got myself into this mess, maybe I can clear the problem. And I wanted to tell her that we need to get on Craigslist and avoid this. Yeah, this is gibberish. He, you know, he thought he got himself into this mess. What does that mean? Um, by talking to the girl, um, 
potentially a crime has been committed, but before he started the sex talk, um, you know, what um, they said they were talking about something else before the sex. So as long as he kept it at that level and then, you know, just said, okay, bye. <laughs> it was nice talking to you, but you're 14 or 13. Then he could have avoided any crime. And once again, he could have told her at the beginning, you're too young um, to be on these, uh, you know, uh, Craigslist. You're too young to be looking for something like this online. Um, you should just date someone that's uh, in middle school like you. you initiated that you wanted sex with her, did you know she was 13 at the time? Yes. Okay, now you're telling this police officer that when you knew she was 13, your intention was to have sex with her. Why are you telling him that? <clears throat> it was all it was all just a cover up for what I really want to do and what I really want to tell this person because I had a motive really um, behind the reasoning why I wanted to tell why I told her that I wanted to have sex with her that night. Hey, What's the motive? You had a friend that a girl that had gone to meet up with an adult male and she wound up being killed, correct? That's correct. And <laughs> you're saying the plot twist he's trying to be a hero <laughs> that is one of the things that sensitized you to wanting to get this girl off of a path she didn't need to be on correct uh-huh and you understand that this looks really bad right yes this is probably the worst thing that's ever happened to me now sebastian probably. said he wanted to take a polygraph to i feel like Unless this guy has been through a lot of tragedy in his life, then um, it it is the worst thing. <laughs> Clear his name uh, with the police. Let's take a look at this. I saw an ad on Craigslist, but eventually she told me that she was 14. But at the time, I was driven by lust and desire to have a companionship and to feel whole with somebody Ew. Regardless of who they were. Now you went out there for what purpose for real? And don't don't minimize it here, please. Originally it was about sex. You're not a pedophile. You're not looking on Mars. You don't want to hurt my guy. Is that what you're telling me? Yes. You were telling the truth about the case question, which one was the hardest for you? I'd say um what was it? Not supposed to stay a minor, not telling porn. Child porn. You didn't pass the test one time. <sighs> I want to give you another one, but I need to know kind of like why you did it. Because whatever you did, just tell me. And I'm not saying you raped somebody. You understand that, right? Right. You're, you're saying, I, yes, I knew she was 14, but kind of lust took over. And so I, I wanted that companionship no matter what. Right. In his mind, he thought, <laughs> right. I'm a safe person. She's... Uh, better off hanging out with me. Well, than you don't know what else. was in his mind, Mom. You weren't there. Okay. You weren't in his head that night. You have a law enforcement officer sitting there and somebody saying, you knew she was 14. And he's saying, I know, but lust took over, so I didn't really care. Lust. He was telling them basically what he's supposed to say or what he, they want him to say. Yeah, right. But he said it. Am I in denial? Well, I think what he said uh, is what? very incriminating here. Okay. Are, are you saying okay. that had you shown up and a, a very a, a attractive young girl had shown up with a willing spirit to have sex with you, you would have said, no, 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 no. I, I'm just here to put you on the right path. Would you have resisted the temptation if you had shown up and she was there? Yes. Girls who push themselves actually too far onto me are a bit overwhelming, honestly. And the fact that I knew that she was 14. 
two minutes ago, he was saying how he doesn't have any or much dating experience. So where is this torrent of women like hopping, you know, onto this guy, um, like sex crazed, uh, trying to accost him, right? It doesn't exist. Um, this is, it probably would have been too much for me to bear. What I'm most worried about is this house. You've heard all the stories about what happened here, right? Yeah, like, Sebastian was trapped in a sexting operation. He was on an adult site, and he's been labeled a child predator because of this. And I do not think that is fair because he is not a child predator. He was not looking for a child or a minor. He was on an adult site. Yeah, but he found he one. He was tricked into what happened. Araceli and Sebastian are not the only mother and son team fighting against what they say is a corrupt criminal justice system. Now, Kathleen says her son, Jace, uh, is one of the hundreds of men arrested by police in a crime with no real victim. Three years ago, I went on Craigslist and I was looking to hook up with a woman. He met someone who claimed to be a gamer. And so obviously this is a huge draw for Jason. When you log on to Craigslist, you had to confirm that you were 18 years old. And this ad was a young gamer girl at home. And I started off because I didn't want sex, I just wanted games. They said that they were 13. I didn't believe it. I asked if it was a typo and they meant 23. And I was like, do you have a picture? And the picture that I was sent was that of a 24-year-old woman. And in my head, it clicked that I was dealing with an adult that just enjoyed role-playing as a younger person. It's an adult and it looks like an adult. I mentioned... Um, okay, so on some dating sites, uh, people will lie about their age, right? Um, usually in the direction of you know being younger for example like if a woman is 30 um and she feels like she looks younger maybe she'll put on her profile that she's 28 right and you should be honest about your age so there's no surprises later on but i feel like you know that's not such a big deal um uh, but if you're 23 pretending to be 13, first of all, I don't think that happens. Like, um, I don't think there are people that are 23 pretending to be 13 online. <laughs> because by that age, like once you're in your 20s, maybe you start to feel insecure about how old you look. So you would dial it down, but you wouldn't dial it down at 10 years. So um, people think you're a middle schooler, right? Like that, that does not happen. Um, and uh, a lot of um, these people, uh, they, yeah, they think that the uh, 30 year old or, or something is pretending to be 13 online, but then they go ahead and they still meet the person. So, Two or three times you know, why would you want to hang out with someone you already know is a liar? And they were asking what type of things I was into, bondage, BDSM, that kind of stuff. Honestly, she was really the one pushing the conversation more towards sex. She suggested that I pick up condoms on the way over. I was expecting video games and a sexual encounter with an adult when I got there. When I arrived at the house, an adult woman opened the door, said hi, asked me to come inside and take off my shoes. And while I was doing that, a number of cops came around the corner and said that I was under arrest. He gets arrested for attempted rape of a child in the second degree, which is a class A felony. He did not have any intention of committing a crime. I was accused of a victimless crime and I should never have been charged as a felon. The judge found me guilty and I was sentenced to eight. So this is really tough. Um, he called it a victimless crime and that's correct because there is no victim but when he saw this older woman open a door and i don't know if it was the girl in the pictures or something if it didn't match up to that person then you know right then and there he should have left um but, but he went inside 
So I don't know, maybe he was hoping the girl was inside, the girl in the photo. I don't know. Um, no matter what excuse they give, it doesn't really uh, make sense. And it doesn't really jive with the fact that they are going there to have sex with someone. Someone that um, there's a good chance is underage. 18 months, prison time. I am not a child predator and yet I'm treated like one. Having to register as a sex offender for a crime I didn't commit made me lose faith in my country. Yeah, so no, he didn't um, molest anyone. It, and the other guy said this too, that they're not um, predators because they didn't actually go through with the um, uh, abuse or, you know, molestation. But it doesn't matter because if you try to steal something from a store and you get caught while you're still in the store, you're still a thief. Like, just because you weren't, you're not a successful thief, but you're, you are still a thief. So just because you didn't follow through with the crime doesn't mean you aren't guilty of that crime. So... My son was convicted of these crimes, but he is not a pedophile. Or, you know, to, sorry, to give another example, if you try to set someone's house on fire, um, but they put out the fire before anything happens, you're still an arsonist. <laughs> it is my opinion that the police are running these proactive stings and ruining innocent people's lives for the monetary gain. Proactive. And I think it's outrageous. I was caught in a... Proactive stings. So the police should be proactive. Um, they shouldn't just wait for crime to happen necessarily. Cycle of overeating, and one day I woke up and I was 35 pounds heavy. Well, Kathleen and Jace join us now virtually. Uh, Kathleen, Jace, uh, hello. Hi. Hello. Jace, uh, let me start with you. You feel like you were set up in this thing, uh, and have really done absolutely nothing wrong, correct? Uh, correct, yes. And there was an ad placed that you responded to, and the ad said, just gamer girl sitting home on sunny day, tired of all the rain, sun is good, but this girl is gaming today. When they're trying to, um, they, uh, as in law enforcement, are trying to pose as like a younger female, why is it that there's always typos? Like every single, um, you know, role play, there's always typos. I don't know about you guys, but um, when I was on the internet at 13, I typed properly, you know, with grammar and correct spelling. And, uh, you know, you do use like shorthand and I think that's fine, but um, gosh, like the grammar and spelling of... Um, these decoys, it's always just so horrible. And, <clears throat> so uh, I don't really have a point about that. Just saying like my grammar was proper at that age. So you want to chat. So you responded and what kind of response did you make? Well, my first response was forget sex. Let's talk about video games. This is your conversation. The other person, Julie, says, I'm 13, and this alien is blanking, tearing me up. And you say what? Oof, I said something along the lines of, like, this was a typo. I mean, you mean 23, right? Uh -huh. So Julie says, what you thinking, smiley face? And you say, I don't know, I personally love and you describe a, a sex act pretty graphically, but I want to meet you first and talk to you because I think this could be more if you wanted it to be, smiley face. And she says, wow, you sure you're cool with this? And you and say, cool, well, I'm, cool is spelled K-E-W-L, cool. Wouldn't I be? She says, because I'm 13, plus I can't drive. And you say... Uh -huh. Well, if you want, we can do this in the car. I honestly thought you were joking about being 13. And she says, uh, I'm not. So we still cool? And you say, Are we you still cool? Call the cops, will you? And she says, blank, no. She's clearly saying, 
I am 13. I don't drive. I don't have a car. Are you sure you're cool with me being... Well, I didn't get my license until I was like 25. So, you know. But, um, yeah, she's mentioned clearly it's not a typo. And he's still proceeding with the sexual conversation. He's not talking that much about video games. 13 years of age. Uh, she is, but in my mind, I'm still dealing with someone that's pretending to be this age. That they're not actually 13. Okay. Role play is if you say so. Thing. And so when she sent the picture, you thought the picture was a role play? I thought the picture was her, a real, an adult woman. The 13 was the role play. It's something called age play, where you pretend to be an age that you are not. <laughs> and you see it... Yeah, I've heard this argument, too, and... It's really silly. Like, oh, yeah, I thought we were role-playing. But the thing about role-playing is both people are supposed to be aware of what, um, that you're role-playing and what the role-play is. So if you're both role-playing as, like, animals or something, um, then, you know, you tell the other person that you're having sex with or whatever, um, hey, do you want to role-play as, like, dogs or something? So... <laughs> If you just start barking, the other person's going to be confused because they're not in on the game. Like, um, they're going to be like, okay, um, this is maybe like a fetish thing for them, but I didn't consent to this and I wasn't aware we're role-playing as dogs. So that argument goes out the window along with every other argument. Uh, often, probably most often in uh, women dressing up in like cheerleading uniforms, yeah, we know we know what role playing is. You don't need to explain role playing to us. Um it's uh yeah, it's so condescending for him to explain role playing. He hasn't established that this girl was role playing. Cool girl outfits. And while you say you can't tell the age, I can see lines on her forehead. I can see perfectly groomed eyebrows. Oh, I can see makeup that was that professionally shade. or an adult put on. That's not a child. People with ADHD save 10 hours. I do believe that I was entrapped and falsely accused by the Washington State Police. After I got out of prison, I had to register as a sex offender and meet up with my parole officer. These stings that the police are running is ruining people's lives and it needs to stop. Now, Jay says that he was on an adult website, was sent an adult photo, and thought the woman chatting with him was in the role play. Now, his mom, Kathleen, says these undercover sex stings are a wanton misspending of funds and resources. Now, Lieutenant Brandon Purcell, the commander of the Central California Internet Crimes Against Children Task Force, says nobody's being tricked here. This task force conducts operations that are undercover operations in which task force members pose as children online to identify sexual predators that are trying to entice our children. It is very clear when they're arrested what they're doing. They have arrived to meet a child to have sex. We have definitively told them from the beginning, this is an 8-year-old, this is a 12-year-old, this is a 14-year-old that you're speaking with. There is nobody that's going to be able to sit in there and truthfully say, I had no idea I was meeting a child. People who say that we set them up and that we're trapping them are liars, plain and simple. They know that they're meeting with a child. The last thing that we want to do is take someone's freedom from them. But we so I, I just don't understand the argument um, that this was a setup. Like, so what? So what? I, I think it is a setup and I don't think it matters. When these men are doing that, we're going to come after them. It pisses me off to say that this is a victimless crime. These men are showing up to rape a child. These men are predators. Our children are the most innocent members of our society. So to say that a child is not a victim is absolutely ludicrous. This is not something where if we make 100 extra arrests that we get twice as much money. 
We're not out here for the money. The arrests that we make are protect children. If you're actively trying to seek out children, our detectives are good. They're going to find you. They are going to catch you. Just stop doing it. That's a pretty good argument, you know. Just don't communicate with children online. Um, not just in a sexual manner, but at all. <laughs> Especially if you know you have this problem. And you can live your life as normally as is possible with that condition. Um, and, you know, you can get, like, psychiatric help. And you can have, like, a good life. And, yeah, um, that's what I wish for a lot of these people. If, you know, if they hadn't participated in this that, you know, they would never go after that urge and they could be, you know, really productive members of society and we would all just view them as sick people, which they are. Um, I truly believe this is a mental condition. Um, you know, it's not a sexual orientation. Uh, these people have, yeah, basically a neurological issue of some sort and um, maybe we'll find a cure. Um, the cure could be therapy, um, or it could even be some kind of medication, you know, that works on the part of your brain, uh, responsible for sexual urges. So I'm actually pretty optimistic, even though there's more of these videos online now than ever before. Um, I'm pretty optimistic that this is gonna like die down, that we'll figure out some way to deal with these people. Um, and for some people it's like, uh, if you have these urges, they uh, many people believe you simply can't be cured. And I don't think that's true. So, you know, psychiatry in many ways is so backwards. Um, yeah, so that, that's all I have to say is I'm optimistic that um, one day we'll have a remedy for this issue. And it could be as simple as, you know, putting these people in therapy for the rest of their lives. Um you know, everyone wants, like, a wonder drug. I think this is a situation in which, um, you know, psychiatric medication can be beneficial. Uh, um, some people have suggested, like, chemical castration. I think there's, like, some human rights issues with that. But, you know, um, that's also something to explore. Brandon Purcell uh, joins us now. Lieutenant Purcell, thank you for being here. Thank you, Brandon. These folks have... He's so happy to be on a camera. serious problem with this proactive effort to take predators off of the street. They say that's a setup, that's entrapment. What do you say? It's pretty simple that it's not entrapment. They were told that these girls are 13, period. If you go online and you are trying to have a casual encounter or a hookup or anything, and someone says they're 13, that's the end. Stop. Well, now, Jace yeah. and Sebastian would both argue if I... That's pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, once you, you see a number below 18, then, you know, block them and X out of the chat. And as far as I know, uh, no crime has been committed. If someone tells you they're under 18 online, that's not a crime. Um, but if you try to pursue something sexual, that is a crime. And if you try to meet with them, that is a crime. If I can speak for you for a second. He never met with a child. Jace never met with a child. Sebastian Jace never touched a child. Never had any... What I'm most worried about is appropriate interaction with a child, but yet are both listed on the, on the sex registry, Jace for life. What do you say about that? Just because the act didn't take place does not mean that that's not their intention. Now, the fact that law enforcement was fortunate enough to prevent it, thank God. Because it is very common that in these stings, when we arrest these predators, 
we go and backtrack and we've found additional victims. You're expressing to me that you're trying to find people who are looking for children. How is it that you know what somebody's thinking? This is a thought crime only, and it's not victimless. My son went to prison. Oh, he your is son's the victim, victim in this case. Putting my son in prison and saying you're keeping. She's such a Karen. Um, she she says it's a thought crime, but that's only because there was no real child. But if there was, it would have been a crime crime, not a thought crime. Um, it would have been a physical crime. Something probably would have happened. Keeping the public safe is you're undermining public safety. You're telling the world that you have found one. You have it. There's really somebody out there who's doing this. You're wasting our time. I'd like to respond to that. Okay, go ahead. So it is a crime to solicit a known child online. So right. we're not a pre-crimes unit. They have committed that crime. When you send harmful matter to a child, you have committed that crime. No. Let me finish. No? Let me finish. Sure. So I understand oh, from such a Karen. standpoint. They don't want to believe that this is taking place and that their sons have done this. And she's saying that we can't tell their intentions. You're right, we can't. They're, they have told us. They have sent us messages telling us exactly what they intend on doing. She's like, child. <laughs> That's black and white evidence about that. I waived all of my rights to an attorney. I let you guys search my car, my phone. You found nothing. And you, while I was being interviewed, they forced words into my mouth. If you were looking for sexual predators for minors, why was I then sent the picture of an adult woman? It doesn't matter. Who cares? You were told that she's 13. Walk away. You know, we always caution parents to talk to their children about being careful. Yeah, even if law enforcement sent him a photo of like an actual grandma, um, you know, with gray hair and like big glasses. <laughs> They should um, assume something is up, and they should just not meet that person. Uh, this isn't that hard to understand. Like, uh, they're trying to skirt the line between like, is she underage or is she like in her early twenties? And yeah, like I said, even if they sent a picture of a literal um, elderly lady, you should still not meet that person. Yeah. Careful online because there are predators online and i've had so many tragic stories where uh, young girls are lured out of their home to meet a predator who abducts them rapes them kills them uh and to very tragic outcomes but parents also need to talk to their sons and realize if they are talking to an underage girl on the other end that is going to come to a very bad outcome. If it is a real underage girl and they're telling you what you want to hear and so you're feeling like a big guy and all of that, you need to disengage because that young girl has parents and they're going to hold you to account, my friend. They're going to find you and they're going to hold you to account and an underage girl does not have the capacity to give consent and that is rape, and her parents are going to track your happy ass down and prosecute you to the full extent of the law. So you parents need to tell your sons not to be talking to underage girls on the Internet. And if somebody on the other side turns out to be underage, they... Yeah, the only issue with that is um, most predators aren't like announcing to their parents, hey, by the way, I've been talking to um, this girl online. And when I say girl, I mean literal girl. <laughs> like, this is um, the first time these parents are finding out about it. So, uh, and the guys that wouldn't do this don't need a talking to. Um, they know, right? Uh, I remember when I was a teenager, um, there was a uh, junior so he was um i believe 17 or something and he got made fun of for dating a uh, freshman so that's only like two years difference and even some uh, yeah so um children teenagers are aware of this and if teenagers are aware of it young adults 
in you know their 20s or something are also aware of it so it um i don't disagree with what dr phil is saying but it's just like asinine they need to hit the leak escape get out and get away avoid even the appearance of impropriety and as i've said if you think that you have not done anything wrong shut your mouth and get an attorney do not try to explain it do not try to justify it mm -hmm. don't say a word so we have to be responsible for our choice yeah you know these guys should have um not said anything and immediately asked for a lawyer but then we wouldn't have caught these guys so you know like that's good legal advice but it's not good um social advice this is because there are consequences online when you open your mouth, when you start those keys moving, there are consequences, and we just need to be aware of that. Young men caught in a police sex date. Task force members pose as children online to identify sexual predators. He knows she's 13, and you know that's wrong, and you know that's wrong. My son went to prison. New Dr. Phil. Mm-hmm.